Hey everybody, welcome to day number two of e-learning. We are moving on from stoichiometry, but before we get into all this stuff up here, quick update, or at least a recap of day one, we finished some stoichiometry. So I saw that at least up till, uh, you know, at least for now, from when I made the video, at least when I posted this video, I think about five or six uh, of you have actually submitted the three-step stoic homework. So it should be 20, okay? It should be 20 people, okay? Uh, this is all mandatory. It's not optional, okay? I just need to reiterate that. I can't say that. I can't stress it enough. So make sure that you are turning in your work, okay? I know I'm not there to pester you and to make you turn in your work, but you got to do it, okay? Um, don't let the missing work pile up. All right, so moving on, we're getting into acid-base chemistry. So yes, this is more applicable, I would say, to, um, for real life. So geometry, sometimes yes, but I would say acids bases is probably my favorite part of chemistry. Uh, now again, obviously we're not in the lab, but we could do lots of experiments with acids and bases. You've heard of acids and bases before, especially acids. Now we're talking about uh, sour things, okay? So things that make your stomach kind of go, uh, uh, you have acid in your stomach, it's called hydrochloric acid, okay? So before I actually get to the stuff I have up here, um, we are going to jot, or I want you to jot a few things down today, basically taking some notes on uh, what are acids, what are bases, and some straight up very generic pH scale information or pH information. So, but what I do have for the agenda for day number two, and your day will be April 7th, okay? Uh, so day two, we have acid-base vocab that is going, to be on haiku, is going to be on haiku, or is on haiku. Make sure you get that done and submit it. And then also we're looking at names and formulas of acids. So you're going to be writing some rules for how to write the names and formulas of some very common and uncommon acids. Submit both of these to prove participation for day number two, and because they are homework and they will add to your grade. Um, remember again that e-learning is mandatory. Make sure you turn in day one's work. Great. So I do suggest getting out something to write with, something to write on. Um, we're gonna look at a generic pH scale. So I will. I do have a scale showing somewhere up here. Um, so I want to kind of show, you know, go down the line. What's going on with um, with acids and the bases? Right in the middle of the pH scale, we have neutral things. That's going to be my water, okay? Water is the most popular neutral substance, has a pH of 7, okay? That means it is neither an acid, over here, and neither a base, but it's actually a combo of both. So it's kind of like both the acid and the base completely have neutralized each other. So when you drink water, you don't get the acidic taste of acids, you don't get the bitter, soapy taste of bases, you get neither. You just get straight up water. Now again, water does have a taste to it. It's just you're used to it, so you really don't taste it at all. It's like when you breathe. I'm sure like air has a scent or odor to it. It's just you don't notice it because you're used to it. Okay, there you go. So going on the acidic part, the primary part of acids, or at least what makes an acid an acid, is something called a hydrogen ion. So as you get further down this side of the pH scale, closer to the ones and the twos and the zeros, um, you have more hydrogen ions in your substance. So I have a tomato here um, that I'm going to use for dinner tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. So tomatoes are slightly acidic. Okay, not crazy acidic. If you bite into a tomato, it's probably a little bit sour, not crazy sour. Um, but it's not crazy acidic. I would say maybe a pH between maybe four or five, give or take. Um, as you kind of go further down though, things get slightly more acidic. So here, I'm gonna maybe mix these. I've got, all right, a soft drink or carbonated beverage, I guess. It's got what's known as phosphoric acid in it. It's got about a pH of three. So these are getting more sour, more acidic as you go down. I've got some hot sauce here. Well, it's, it's medium, but it's hot sauce. It's got a lot of vinegar in this, which and vinegar is sour, okay? So if you ever take a you know gulp of vinegar, it's super sour. Um, then I got some delicious uh, raspberry vinaigrette salad dressing. It's got vinegar in it, vinaigrette. It's sour, it is an acid. And now I've got a lime, which I tend to, which I want to use for dinner uh, tonight. So limes are actually very acidic. Also, I'd say a pH of, pH of about two, 
give or take. So we've got like, you know, five to four-ish, we got about threes and twos over here. And as you go further down, you get to more acidic things like car, you know, sulfuric acid, acid and car batteries and such. We tend to say that anything under seven is an acid. And usually you can't have negative pH values, it's possible, it's just we don't use them that often. Now, more H pluses are, I means you have an, a stronger acid, but the less H plus you have, the, the weaker your acid, and bases are actually very prevalent in uh, hydroxide, so OH minus ions. So here I've got some Tums. As a kid, I used to eat these when they, were, when they had no candy. Not the best thing to do. It says there's some calcium carbonate in here. It says right in the, uh, in the drug facts right here. Tums are actually used to, they're called antacids, anti-acid. Oh, there you go. It's not an acid. It actually neutralizes acid in your stomach. So if you eat too much, too many of wings, okay, or drink too much of this, or just you some reason eat a bunch of these, or just gobble down a bunch of this, you take a bunch of Tums, and uh, it should make your stomach feel better, so it neutralizes that extra acid in your stomach. You don't want to take too much, though. Okay, your stomach is normally is regularly acidic, so you don't want to just uh, ah, 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 you know, down these, and then your stomach's not going to be happy. This has a pH of roughly nine, nine to ten, and as you go to baking soda, it's also roughly nine to ten. So baking soda is used to help neutralize acid spills. Uh, that's again baking soda vinegar. You've seen that baking soda vinegar reaction before. They actually neutralize each other. Okay, so baking soda is a base. Dishwasher detergent, all right, in other words, these little pods, right? Yeah, these, these little pods. Don't eat them, oh God. Ugh, how did that become a thing? Uh, these little pods are cleaning agents. They're full of cleaning agents. Cleaning agents tend to be bases, soapy things, slippery things, etc. pH of about, I'd say, 11, 10 to 11-ish, give or take, maybe 11, 12. So as you get higher in pH, things become more basic. Doesn't mean they're better for you. A lot of people think that acids are like the dangerous person of the chemical world, the chemical universe. But, I mean, take a look at this. You can eat this, okay? These are acids. You can't eat these. These are bases. So some people think that bases are like safer than acids. No. Just because it's a base doesn't mean it's safer than an acid, okay? I put this on my salad. I don't put this on my salad. <laughs> Okay, so please, that's a huge misunderstanding. Some people think acids are bad and bases are good. No, all right? There's parts of both that are really bad and parts of both that are fine, okay? Now, I don't want to be, you know, drinking sulfuric acid, which has a pH of 1 or 0, but I also don't want to be drinking Windex, okay, which has a pH of about 12, 11, 12, okay? So that is the generic pH scale. Please write down the scale. I would also write down some of the things that are the different pH values. And as we go on in this unit, I'm thinking of maybe between, I don't know, three to four days, we're going to be doing some math, we're going to be looking at some reactions, and make sure we're looking at the vocab and then some names and uh, formulas. And if you want, you can always, you know, if you're home, or you are home, <laughs> look through your ingredients, look through like a lot of your food that you eat, or food that, you know, things that you drink, um, things that you wash with, things you put in your mouth, or things that you just clean with. Read the, uh, you know, you know, the, you know the, uh, the label, and you can actually see what some uh, acids are. You'll see a lot of things that have acids in them. Um, you'll see a lot of carbonates. Carbonates are bases. Um, it's just nice to, you know, to know what you're actually putting in your stomach when you eat things. So, great.